Richard Crum founded R.S. Crum Incorporated in 1976 and in so doing created one of the first fee-only financial advice and investment management firms in the country. Drawing from nearly four decades of experience advising a wide cross-section of individuals and families, Mr. Crum has compiled what he considers to be the four most glaring mistakes people make with regard to their personal finances. This lecture discusses what one needs to do to recognize and overcome these obstacles. How many of you do not have money worries? <laughs> no, no, seriously, a show of hands. You, you have no money worries whatsoever. You, one person? I, 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 I really would like to talk to you right afterwards. Don't have any money. <laughs> You know, something that just popped into my mind, and, and in the context of what I want to talk to you about, is the fact that people have this perception that if you don't have any money, you don't have any worries. And then there's the other side of the spectrum, where there's that whole group of people out there that said, my God, if I had a million dollars, if I had five million dollars, if I had ten million dollars, I definitely wouldn't have any worries. And I want to tell you something. I've advised people for something like 40 years. And at this point in time, I've represented people who didn't have any money, who were struggling. And I've talked to people that are among the, in fact, today, I represent some of the wealthiest families in the state of California. And that's not meant to be arrogant. It's to point to an issue. And the issue is, that it's my experience that the people who don't have any money, this end of the spectrum, have just as many concerns as the people on the other end. And I think you're probably sitting out there saying, oh yeah, if I had $10 million, no problem. I'd never think twice about anything. I want to tell you that the people who have $10 million and $20 million have as many worries. There's four things that I want to share with you. You don't have to have a Harvard MBA. You don't have to take any financial classes. You don't have to listen to any dreary financial lectures. You can close your eyes and have them glaze over if you want. But there's four things that you should know about finance. And if you just know four things, not the language, just four things about finance that are always true, that's what this lecture is going to discuss and involve you with. You don't need any notes. You should be able to walk out remembering the four things. The number one performing mutual fund from uh, 2000 to 2009, a 10-year period of time, was a fund called CGM Focus Fund. You've never heard of it. That's OK. CGM Focus Fund. It's the number one performing mutual fund. And what would have happened to your money from 2000 to 2009 is if you'd had a dollar in there, it would have returned $6 in 10 years. That's 18% per year for 10 years. If you'd had $100,000 in there, you'd had 600,000 at the end. That's the number one performer. And I want to tell you, there was nobody even close. Nobody even close. The big problem in that 10-year period of time is that we went through the dot-com era, as well as the mortgage meltdown, and all of the other nightmares we've read about and heard about. Now, during that 10-year period of time, stock market in general went down, not up. So all of a sudden, you're looking at this, and you're saying, now, wait a second. So this fund, this particular fund, CGM Focus Fund, actually returned 18% per year on average for 10 years. And thank you, my $100,000 is worth $600,000. I'm cashing out. Thank you. What do you suppose the actual return when Morningstar put all of the people together, all of the times that they entered, all of their actual return, what do you think they found out? The actual person the actual investor lost 11% per year. Eyes go up. You go, what? How, how's that possible? 
If it's true it earned 18% a year, how could it lose 11? Because there's a difference between investor performance, because you didn't put your money in the first day and held it to the 10th day, or 10th year in this particular case. You have a tendency to come in, and all of a sudden, you're reading the LA Times, and they're saying, meltdown of history. People are losing money. And you're looking at your spouse, you're looking at your friend, and you're saying, let's get our money out of there right now. We've got to protect what we have. So there's a behavioral difference between you're actually entering the fund and what your performance was. You lost money. 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 You all lost money, and you bought the best performing fund in history for that 10-year period of time. That's very, very frightening. What are the things we can't remember? What are the things in your budget that you can't remember? Now, we've listed a few of them. Health Club, Nails. Who do you think that came from, man or woman? <laughs> Fantasy football, gambling. Coffee. How much you spend on coffee? Can't remember. OK, now let's, let's have two more, and then we'll end it. Now, these are the things you cannot remember. Kids. Kids. <laughs> Kids, that's fabulous. Kids. One more. Gas. Gas. OK. Gas. OK. Jeez. Hard to write on. OK. Now, everyone has chosen of the things that represent things that you can't remember. This is where your money goes, right? Mm -hmm. OK. I want to tell you. that this is how many correct answers I have. <laughs> Zero. This is crucial. This is crucial in what I'm going to tell you. What I'm going to tell you is that you can't remember what you can't remember. <laughs> Isn't that true? You can't remember what you can't remember. You wrote down the things you can remember. You can remember the kids. You know how much those lessons cost, don't you? It's terrible, but you remember. Now, let me say it another way, and I'm going to give you the solution. I'm going to give you the solution, and it is a painless solution. The things that you're going to replace are the things you cannot remember, and I defy you at the end of the year to reverse this by Trying to remember what you don't remember? No. What you do with your current income, with the money that's flowing into you, do one thing for me. Take the very first check that you ever write, the first, never the second, can't ever be the third, it has to be the first, or you violate the ordinance of it, so to speak. Write the first check for any amount you want to write it for. You want to write it for $50? $100, I'm going to argue that you have $200. And in some people's cases, it's more. It's almost never less. Write your first check the first time the, this month, today. Write it to yourself. Put it in the bank. Write it for $100 and put it in the bank and make it the very first check. Now, this is what's going to happen to you. At the end of this period of time, I want to see if there's any pain. Spend, do whatever, do the kids, give the lessons, buy the gas, do the nails, the health club, whatever you want to do. And at the end of the month or at the end of the quarter, however you want to figure it up, if you feel that you've deprived yourself of something, it won't work. But I'm going to tell you 100 times out of 100, you won't even know the difference. And you'll have $300 left. That's painless. It'll work forever and you will not be on the so-called financial diet.